Caralho. Is this kind of triggering watching this? Do you see yourself in my shoes going through the pains of trying to get yourself set up doing squats? This is why leg press might be a better option. Check this out. Today guys, we're diving into the world of lower body training, comparing leg press to back squats and why leg press might be that much better for your quad gains. So guys, without further ado, let's get into it. So why would leg press be much more optimal for you in terms of squats? Well, number one, it's safer to perform. It's easier to learn correctly and you're not loading your spine so when it comes to us building our quads we need to learn how to use this machine the right way for it to actually be on the same level as squatting so again we're doing leg press we're thinking more so quads quad gaining right obviously when doing squats you're getting a lot of glutes some hams and quads for here primarily quads so let's get in this show you guys how to use this thing properly the best possible way so number one when you're getting most of these machines have an adjustable back and sometimes I see a lot of people with this part all the way up here so when they step in leg press they're already basically here so when they're pressing up now is there anything wrong with this no but we want to get the most range of motion so for instance from here I'm doing my leg press yeah, it's good here that's as far as I can go. I can't go back any further. Plus, the angle of this back here is gonna give us a lot more range of motion, plus more of the load coming down onto us vertically. Right now, I'm almost horizontal, a little bit. So I wanna get the best of this right away. I need to set this thing up so it's all the way back so I can have this thing coming down a longer distance. We're gonna put this thing all the way down. Now let's talk about foot placement. Well, number one, so where do our feet need to be on this? Well, they need to be in a place where we're getting the most amount of knee flexion. Now, what does knee flexion look like? Knee flexion is basically when this knee comes all the way down, basically over toe. Now, if I come down and my feet are up really high, not much knee flexion. They're about 90 degrees right here. This is still not bad, but I wanna get the most amount of knee flexion. I want my knee to do as much as this as I possibly can. The further back it is, the longer it has to travel to extend. So I'm going to adjust my feet so they're down far enough so when I do perform the leg press, when it comes all the way down, it's going to come right over my toe. This is a good amount of knee flexion. Here's the difference between this distance traveling all the way up and here's the difference between this. It's a massive difference. So make sure that when you're placing your feet on the plate, that it's low enough that you can continue to keep your heels on the plate, toes on the plate as well too. And on the way down, we're getting a good amount of knee flexion and knee over toe. Now, make sure that this back doesn't come off. If your back's coming off, you can put something underneath it. But for the most part, just adjust your feet. It's super easy. If I decide to put my feet a little higher, then I'm gonna lower it a little bit until I find my sweet spot. Again, when we're loading on the way down, we wanna stay active. I'm not in any way, shape or form relaxed in this position at all. Your journey to sustainable peak fitness starts right now. Grab the ultimate push-pull life training ebook and the final diet right now in the link in the description below. Now, how far should my feet be? Well, again, putting them super wide, you're gonna create that much more tension and your adductors, and we're really trying to work our quads. So just think about just your basic shoulder width apart. No problem with being shoulder apart, but then my toes, if I really wanna make my quads really active, I'm going to open my toes up a bit. Let's just say 11 o'clock and one o'clock, just like this. And then when we're here, same rules apply when we're squatting. We wanna make sure that we externally rotate so our knees are aligned with our toes. So pretend again there's a piece of paper on the plate and you're trying to rip that piece of paper open until your knees are aligned with your toes. Don't continue to do this and now have your feet doing this. So from here, place your feet a little bit shoulder width apart, toes at 11 o'clock and one o'clock, externally rotating so the knees are aligned with the toes. Grab your handles wherever they're at. Make sure you're, make sure you're stiff right in the back of the bench. Engage your core, head back, 
push into the bench. So you want your lats to be engaged so we're stiff. You want to be basically one with this bench. And from here, let the weight come down, guide it down. Oop. Guide it down. And then we want to get in that nice stretch position, still active, and then fire it up, and then coming right back down. Controlling it, stretch all the way, fire it up, come down again, stretch all the way, press up. Let the weight come down, guide it down, controlling it, then the bottom, let it come right to the bottom, squeeze, stay active, and then fire it up and right back down again, controlling the weight. Squeeze, push, come down again, controlling it, squeeze in here. Again, we wanna be in this stretch portion of the lift and then pulling up and again, controlling it down, pulling yourself in and driving it up. I want to go over a couple of things just with your feet. I took it off my shoe. I take my shoes off so you can actually see how my feet are actually placed on the plate. But then you can actually see why you might want to get some kind of a shoe that has a heel on it. Now I have this plate completely neutral as it is, so it's just a flat plate, nothing changed at all, nothing fancy. For the most part, when people do leg press or anything coming from the ground, the biggest challenge is ankle mobility. So I'm going to put my feet exactly where they were before. I'm going to pull it up and if you look at my feet coming all the way down to where I'm at where I was before you can see that they're coming up a little bit and that's where my shoes make the correction. I'm at the exact same place where my feet were the entire time and at the same range of motion you can see from my feet there on here how my shoes will play a big part and how optimal this is by having my entire foot pressing on something. Right now there's a space between my feet. So if you're going to be doing this without any shoes on, you're going to need to adjust your feet a little bit so that on the way down, now my feet are completely on. And I still have a good enough amount of knee flexion. In order for me to get, for me to go all the way down, you can see how much it comes up. So if I want to get the exact same amount of hip and knee flexion, I need to make sure that I'm wearing a shoe that's going to allow that or make sure that I am putting my feet up, adjusting it enough so that my heels do stay on the entire time. We want the entire heel and toe to be active throughout the entire lift. We don't want your toes popping off. We want them placed on, gripping, and then driving straight up. Going to be down, same thing. Controlling it, and then driving it up. Now, when it comes to full range of motion, I am not locking out. I am squeezing my quads. The difference between locking out and the difference between squeezing my quads. This is locking out. From here, that's locking out. This is squeezing my quads. You can see the difference between this and this. This is active in my quads. This is locking out. We're not locking out, we're activating our quads. So we are here and we're flexing through, not hyperextending. So how do we probably program this? Again, if we're really trying to focus on our quads, this is definitely your game changer or your go-to for quads. Now again, treat it like an actual bench press. We wanna ride that, ride the negative on the way down a nice two to three second negative, and then at the stretch part of the at the stretch portion of the lift, where the knees are absolutely flexed, staying with tension on the muscle the entire time, for about a second, and then firing that weight back up, flexing through the quad, then coming back down. You can load this thing up pretty well, pretty good, but I would say start off doing like reps of like five to fifteen reps, two three second negative, and then load it from there. Don't change anything else. Don't add a bunch of weight to start off. Start slow, two three negative. Stretch at the bottom, one second pause at the top. As soon as you get to the top, right back down again. And again, make sure that we control those first three inches down, those first three inches up. All right, guys, that is it for the video today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you use any of the cues that I showed you today, let me know in the comment section below. So next time, guys, binge watch my videos. You guys know how it is. Iron Sharp is Iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.